On July the 4th, 1054, Chinese astronomers noticed a new star. Located in constellation Taurus, it became the brightest star in the night sky, practically overnight, and it stayed that way for more than 23 days. It was so bright that it could be seen even during daytime, and then it disappeared. Using their records, we can now point our telescopes in the exact same spot where that guest star appeared, and we can see this, a crab nebula. They didn't know it back then, but they actually saw a star explode 6,500 light years away from them. When you look up at the night sky, you can see many stars on a clear night with no light pollution, around 3,000 in total. On the other hand, if you live in a well populated area like a city, then you can't expect to see even a hundred or so. Of course, a hundred or three thousand is just a small, small fraction of the total number of stars in our universe. It has been estimated that there are over 10 to the power of 23 stars in the observable universe. That's one followed by 23 zeros. You know how much that is? If this ball is a star, then you can fill up... Wait, that's a bad example. If you were to start counting and you count 1 million stars each second, you will count all the stars in the universe in 3 billion years. There are many stars in the universe and stars are really big. If you were to walk across the equator of Earth, you will make a full circle in just over 300 days. On the other hand, if you were to do the same on our Sun, you will make a full circle in just over 100 years and our sun is considered to be below average when it comes to size. Even though our sun is one of the smaller ones, it's still brighter than the most of the stars in our Milky Way. But you know what's even brighter? Eta Carina. Located in constellation Carina, it is 7500 light years away from us and it's shining brightly. It's 1 million times brighter than our sun and it's 250 times bigger. If we were to replace our sun with it, we would all go blind because the Earth would orbit inside of it. Since it's so big, scientists are expecting it to go supernova any moment now. Of course, when we speak about events like this, any moment can mean from one year to one million years. But no matter when it goes supernova, it will be one of the most spectacular events that our astronomers have ever observed. In less than a few seconds, the whole star will shrink down and collapse in on itself, creating mind-blowing pressures. And then it will explode with such an immense force that we would see that explosion here on Earth with naked eyes during daytime from 7500 light years. Most of the star will be blown away into interstellar space, but something will remain. A neutron star. Made entirely by neutrons, squished together so compactly that the average density can be as high as 6 times 10 to the 17 kilograms per cubic meter. In other words, that thing is so dense that it boggles the mind. And it's so small. Compare the size of Eta Carina now and the neutron star it will leave behind. It's just a few kilometers across, yet its surface gravity is a hundred billion times stronger than here on Earth. In other words, if you weigh 75 kilos here on Earth, on a neutron star you will weigh way more than the whole Mount Everest. Small size of the star allows it to spin very fast. The fastest one we found spun at a staggering rate of 642 revolutions per second. Imagine standing on a star that spins that fast. Imagine looking at the sky. All you would probably see is just a blur. We can't see many stars nowadays. We've polluted our skies with light. And even though stars are very bright, they are still very far away and thus they can't compete with the street lamp in front of your house. The closest star to us is Alpha Centauri, located only 4.3 light years away. And that's more than 40 billion kilometers. And that's the closest one. Stars are very far apart. That's why when the Andromeda galaxy collides with our galaxy, we are not going to see any star collisions at all. Because they are so spaced out. In 1905, one very smart man gave us the way to understand stars. His name was Albert Einstein and he gave us E equals mc squared. 
Stars don't burn. In other words, stars are not big balls of hydrogen on fire. No, stars are thermonuclear beasts. In the core of every single star in the process of nuclear fusion, matter is converted into energy. And that energy gets transferred by photons. But these photons are old. If you watch this during daytime, the light that enters your eyes from the sun is 10 to 200,000 years old. This is because when light gets created in the center of our sun, it cannot just go out, it must bump its way to the surface through all these atoms and molecules around. And then, only then, when it comes to the surface, it can go at the speed of light towards us. So we're lucky to see that light at all. I mean, that light fought for thousands and thousands of years to get out of the sun just to land on your retina, so you don't have to use flashlight all the time. Solar eclipses are scary cool. One of the mind-blowing coincidences of our solar system is that our sun is 400 times bigger than our moon, and it's 400 times further away. That's why they appear almost the same size on our sky, and allow us to see this. Astronauts aboard International Space Station can see something more. They can see the shadow a solar eclipse makes on the Earth. Even though they are scary cool, you shouldn't be looking at them with naked eyes. The moon blocks most of the sunlight and our pupils dilate to adjust. That's why the sunlight that still passes around the moon can easily hit our eyes and damage them. If you look at the full solar eclipse, your eyes will receive 10 times more light than if you look straight at the sun. That's why it's so dangerous. However, it's still extremely cool.